Good evening. Welcome to the Diablo 3 podcast. We are online at DiabloInGamers.com. I am your host, Flux, and joined tonight by Tyr. Hello. And by um, Mudgeon Space, whose name I'll be butchering for the next 45 minutes. <laughs> greetings, greetings. How do, how do we say your name again, dude? MJ in Space works for me. But we're like, we've, we've, I think we've had this discussion in the past. It's not a, an R-O-R-G, it's a R-O-R-G. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And it's not R O S; it's Ross. It's Therefore, you are midgen space. Oh, could you get a more? Could, could, could I buy a vowel, please? Yeah, yeah. Pat, I would like to buy a vowel. Oh dear! Oh dear! This okay, moving right along. This is the uh, the Sanctuary Sweat Shop. It's our new podcast. We're calling it. Mm. That's what you guys are going to spin off into in a few months, right? We're based yeah. out of China. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> like like all other video games in this world. Okay, we are doing um, season two, end of season two plans. Talk about season three stuff, some of the upcoming patch stuff. Flashing back to Monday's uh, tavern talk and some of the things the devs went on into. And I was on a podcast on Wednesday, the uh, the Sanctuary Sweatshop, I believe they're calling it. No, of course, it's the West March Workshop, very very different. And had the told the longest demon hunter story ever, and had a few other stories. So I'll try not to repeat those for those of you who have heard both podcasts. And hopefully mostly let the guests do the talking tonight, and I'll be the host. <laughs> so starting right off, uh, what are you guys up to in Season 2? We've got a week to go. Are you, are you scheming for higher, greater rift runs? Are you saving yourself for the Season 3 rush? What is your plan? What is your current plan here, Tier? And what are you doing for the next week? Uh, I am dead. <laughs> As of today, actually. Um, I ran... Uh, I got a little too uh, full of myself and uh, ran a rift higher than I was... Uh, probably planning on doing for a little bit and I killed my wizard tonight so that was great not that she was great or anything but uh oh well now I get to create a new character she was my first hardcore so um now I get to make a new character and actually have my bona fides so what have you been planning and scheming I mean I've been saving up my demon hunter stuff and planning to make a big push on GRs you know toward the very end of the season Mainly so I don't end up with you. what happened to you, and I have to have a week where I don't want to play a new character. And it's like, but I, I want to play something, but there's no point in starting now, you know? Yeah, it's a nice break, though, but yeah, it's a little bit of a pain, because I'd like to hop right into um, you know, a replacement character. I'm sure I could level a wizard in a couple minutes, and you know, 30 minutes or an hour or whatever if I have to, and then uh, I've got a second set of gear saved up in my bags, but um, probably won't get as high as... Uh, my last tune did, not that she was very high, but uh, hey, I made it onto the uh, the leaderboards, so that oh, was nice. Were you in the 40s or the 50s? <laughs> I was in the 40s. Well, there you go. That's not bad for hardcore. Yeah. We mostly play just T1 all the time, right? So. Endlessly, yeah. It's like greater of 12, you know, it's pretty scary. So do you have any uh, any tragic death stories there, M-J-N-S-P-A-C-E? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I don't. I, I actually totally agreed with Xanth in that. The, the season kind of died for me when, when the PTR came out. It was like, oh, okay, this is what's coming. I'm going to go test all this stuff. And then uh, I just went from there into doing non-seasonal characters and, and just kind of finishing out a number of things I wanted to collect before Season 3 starts, when I know I'm going to be playing seasonal for sure. So that's kind of what I've been up to. And it's been fun. So non-seasonal, better known as single-player online. Pretty much. Yep. Is your are all your friends and if you're in a clan, is everybody playing seasonal and you're just alone or what? Well, I'm actually an IGW, and yes, I'm <laughs> alone sometimes. But no, I, I have a decent friends list, so I've been able to to run with people, and I've actually picked up a bunch of stuff that I that I didn't think I I would ever find an upgrade for, and I did. So that's kind of that's always fun. And then I found a new, not new to anyone else, but I had never paid attention to. The what's it called? It's an amulet you get out of Act Three. It's the overwhelming desire. Like I, I had never farmed Act Three really hard, and and I finally did, and I and I found a couple of those that are really good, and and it's probably the best amulet you amulet you can put on your follower. So that like immediately boosts your damage in in greater rifts. Pretty. Simple. I've found that, but I don't recall what's the legendary property on that. It can on hit charm. A monster, and while that monster is charmed, it takes 35% more damage. So, so you, your follower is making you do 35% more damage to uh, elites and to target uh, X. Yeah, yep, and Rift Guardians. It's it's pretty amazing when it hits. 
Yeah, it's funny. I've done I've done a fair amount of Act Three trying to get a Pride's Fall Helm, you know, yeah. and then, you know, eventually getting one. And I've, I've I've found that annual, but never really paid attention to it. So you 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 feel it's it's really viable on a on a Merc. I, I think it's the best in slot. It, it 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 boosts your damage. It it's so noticeable. Like when you it, when you see it, and then you immediately just go after that elite, whichever one it is. You'll just watch its hit points just melt. So. What is the? Can you estimate what the uptime on that is? Like, if you're on a Rift Guardian, is it always going to proc, or is it like once every five minutes? Or no, something? it's it's about once every I'd say, thirty between thirty and sixty seconds. It, it's all luck based, but it is also attack speed based. So you're probably best off running, say, the Scoundrel, and and just putting as much attack speed on him as you possibly can. That way, he can he can hit over and over and over again. Because the more times it hits, the more chances you get for it. So so that's how you get it to proc a lot. Yeah, I need I need glorious uh, resource re- regeneration. Glorious, glorious. <laughs> Have you tried that amulet tier? And if if not, why not? No. And are you a noob? No, I uh, I'm pretty are much. Are you a goddamn noob I'm like a noob. me? Yeah, I'm a straight up noob, just like you. Um, I had no idea that existed, but hey, uh, season three right around the corner. Yeah. Well, you know, it's only, it's only been in the game for you know 18 months. There's no reason we should know about it. Now, <laughs> well, I didn't know like, about it either. So. Yeah. Who cares about followers? Nobody cares. Nobody cares about nobody followers. Nobody does. <laughs> Yeah, nobody does Act 3 bounties on purpose. You know, it's always like, you get the... You know, there's, actually, I've done a few of those. I mean, trying to get Pride's Fall, you know, so I've done a number of them. Yeah. But there's, like, two of them that are just forever. You know, the one where you have to go to, like, level 2 of the barracks or whatever. Oh, I hate those, yeah. And it's just, it's like 15 minutes to even find the damn thing. And I always get the one, the Underbridge, which is, like, the little dungeon right before you get to Siege Breaker. Yep. Yeah. So you've got to run along that All entire endless there. bridge. Yep. It's a long way, man. Well, I will say this. Yeah. The other thing that I've been doing in Season 2 is is trying to make a lot more builds that are specifically for doing one thing or another. And definitely for, for bounty hunting, uh, you definitely want to go on, on a demon hunter. At least you want to do Donetta's and you want to uh, use a cinder coat. And so, and you use uh, obviously the fire rune. So you, you basically can just endlessly vault. So you no longer have to run through levels. You just vault across the level straight where you have to go do what you have to do. And you can, you can pass all the bounties really, really fast. Indeed. I have a fire multi-shot demon hunter. I'm not using the netas on him, but even even just um, tactical advantage and vault, you know, you can run so much of the time. Yeah, yeah. But, I mean, it's funny once you start doing that, you realize that that bounties are like 85 percent of the time is just getting there. Yep. You know, it's amazing how much of it's just like, yeah, you just got to get there. But occasionally, there's ones where you do a lot of kills. I mean, we were bitching about the, I think it's the Southern Highlands, where it's always 150 kills, and you're like scouring the level, and you're going up that little winding path into like the goat maze, you know? Yeah. And you're like 137, and you're like, God, this is never going to end. <laughs> but generally, yeah, you just want to get there. You know, you get these, you get these guys in the cathedral and stuff, and you know, you, you can't not kill 200 monsters before you get to the boss, kind of thing. Yeah, yeah they're rough. Do you guys ever um, do them solo anymore? I think I did one two days ago. You know, the whole set of five solo, and it was just the most mind-numbing thing. Well, like, like I generally I said, do them solo. I haven't done. I yeah. I found really early in season two, I got a, a ring of royal grandeur with forty-eight percent crit damage. So oh I really God. haven't had to bother with those much. I've been <laughs> lucky, lucky enough. To, <laughs> yeah, you know, the you first go. one I found all season. I was like, okay, I'm done. And I've done a few since then. I kind of found a couple of ancient rorgs, but they didn't have very good damage mods. But yeah, I see some people who just do them endlessly. I mean, usually in hardcore in the clan, you'll just be like, you know, you. Someone finishes it and say, "Hey, who wants Act One? You know, T six bounties." Everybody jumps in their game really quick just to get the bounty cash. Yeah, I'm actually excited for next season just to be able to do some of that again. So, like, do some, do some bounty runs and do some uh, Hellfire amulet runs with people that that want to do it. So you're not always like trying to find that one other person that that is non seasonal that wants to do it. I actually did a bunch of Hellfire rings last, just last night. I got in, and I had, I had like, my keys, I had, like, I don't know, six, three, two, nine, something like that, and said, anybody want to do some Ubers? And suddenly we had, you know, immediately we had four people in the game. Like, nobody was doing them, but once like, once someone said everyone had, like, three keys, <laughs> so we ended up with, with four people all at, like, Paragon 500 or higher, you know, just and just, you know, just steamrolling. You know, everybody, everybody needed Act 2 Bounty, of course. Because everybody hates goddamn Act Two Dog or Oasis. It's so long to find. In my experience, that's by far the biggest one. <laughs> it right? is, it it's just, is big. Yeah, yeah. it's got to be. You get four people and you all spread out. You can get it pretty quick, you know. Yeah. Yeah. And then we just steamrolled the Ubers, and I made four Hellfire rings, just trying to get. I have I have two virtually perfect amulets, like nine point five, ninety eight percent, twenty percent elemental, you know, and socket. Nice. Like I'm not going to improve on that, you know. Yeah. 
So I just made some rings, hoping I would get a decent ring, and I could just use that for the past week, last week, to do a little bit of experience running. And they all sucked. I mean, just absolutely awful. <laughs> you know, like like eleven percent life. You know, ninety percent resistance. Like all these like just these terrible mods. <laughs> Any one of them is like minus eleven percent from my roar. You know, it's like not even like, not even a good ring. Classy, Have either of you guys ever gotten a good Hellfire amulet? Yes, yes, but it it did not. It 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 was a fire amulet, and and that's actually something else. I've I've actually learned a number of things at the end of the season, but I'll I'll talk about that in a second. It was a fire amulet that does not have a socket, which is sad. But it gives it gave good fire damage. It had high crit damage and uh, good crit chance and dex, and it gave the awareness passive. So that meant you were wide open to do anything else with the rest of your passives that you wanted to. But. Uh, yeah, yeah also, that's the worst thing when you get a decent one and it's got a horrible passive. It's like, yeah, what do I do? That's really frustrating. But no, that was probably the best one I've ever found. And and the fire build for the demon hunter is actually viable. It's not definitely not as strong as cold or physical, but you can get pretty darn far with it if if you have the right items. Well, wait for the new set. That's that's very viable with the new the new uh, multi shot set. Oh you know? yeah, def then then ballistics and fire is going to be pretty crazy. Have you ever gotten a good uh, hellfire or anything to your? Definitely not. I've... To be honest, most of the time, uh, you know, when I look at uh, builds and that kind of thing to try out, like, you know, they're like, oh, we'll just use a um, Countess Julia's cameo or whatever on this. And I'm like, all right, fine. I got one of those. Pop it on. So I think I've only ever done it like twice. Yeah, I did a fair number of Hellfire Amulet early in the season, too. Just like, you know, once I could do T6 pretty pretty well, I got a couple of guys in the game. We all, you know, we all spread out through the key runs. And did them just hoping, you know, I didn't have any good amulets yet, so I would have been willing to use one that wasn't perfect or something. Yeah. And I just know, I just, I think I made six or seven, and they all just sucked. I'm like, this is just bullshit. <laughs> yeah. You know, it, I can't it's bother frustrating. with this. It's really frustrating. That's I mean, sure. I mean, there are some good passives, but if you're giving up like 14% DPS or something, you know, it's, it's hard it. to hard to decide which one is better. Yeah, it's it really, it really isn't worth it. If if your goal is greater rifts, at the end of the day, uh, the definitely that passive isn't gonna isn't gonna make up for the loss of damage that you have. So, yeah. And it's funny because now we have these would have been probably better amulets in Diablo three vanilla when you only had three passives, right? Mm-hmm. Right. Because adding a fourth was a bigger deal, whereas you know just adding a fifth when you've already got four. I mean, are there any builds where you're like, okay, if I just had these five passives, that would be spectacular? Oh, I mean, yeah, I mean, I mean usually, usually when I look, there's like <laughs> two that are absolutely mandatory, and then there's like three or four others that are okay but not totally awesome. Uh, I, I don't know. Do you have a build that has five absolutely mandatory passives? There's, there, well, not mandatory, but I mean, you're gonna, you're gonna get so much more damage. Uh, the demon hunter and I think the monk, and I think the wizard, they have some really good passives. And if you can add plus one, you can kick up your damage by like twenty, sometimes thirty percent. So yeah, especially I mean, when yeah. you, especially when you consider that hardcore characters most of the time are taking the cheat death passives. You know, so you can yep. roll with a uh, a set of passives like your uh, software softcore character and then you know you've got one extra slot for that uh, cheat death yeah but I mean, what are the odds of a good hellfire amulet like one in thir- one in 30 or something it's and bad. a good passive on it yeah it's pretty bad i yeah. mean you got to make a lot to, i mean eventually you get you get so specialized i mean you want you want to get that cccd socket elemental you know yeah, yeah. and if you even if you're missing even one of those it's like 11 percent damage i mean if you just if you just go from like 98 percent crit damage to like you know 700 main stat that is a gigantic drop in DPS, it so it's tough to make up for it. Yeah, I think it's more fun. Like I was saying early in the season, when you can first get the T6, you know, safely and then quickly, that's when you go for them because you probably don't have a fantastic amulet yet. And obviously, the odds of getting a good one are pretty crappy, but you know, it's something to do. Yeah, yeah something different, right? Yeah. Yeah. Enjoy and say hi to the dog or Oasis for me. <laughs> it's funny how <laughs> um, you know players. <laughs> I think it's the start of the season is indicative of this. Like everybody starts out, and they're so excited just to do something different. You know, than running G riffs and regular riffs, you know, farming or whatever that they're doing, and then, <laughs> but there's also this contrary opinion where not only do they want to do something different, they also want to blitz through the thing that's different as fast as possible to get to seventy <laughs> and get back to greater riffs. It just doesn't make any sense. Yeah, unfortunately, you can't do key farming on your way to seventy, right? So they don't drop them until seventy. I don't think so. Yeah, they even, I don't think you even get yeah. key wardens until seventy, supposedly, but. Yeah, it's hard to figure out. I mean, of course, once you're once you're established and you have your gym of ease, you know, you get to seventy in like forty five minutes, so it's sort of irrelevant. Mm-hmm. But that first time through, it's like trying to think, how can I possibly make this experience worthwhile? I mean, aside from building up like you know rift keys and blood shards, I don't know. What, there's not much else to do, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. No. Anything you'll ever use at seventy, other than you know experience. 
Yeah. You, you, and, and the friendships you make along the way. There you Roll go. those dice there again. You go. Many times. <laughs> Try to get some good loot. Okay. Yes. Yeah, so my only end of season thing that I've been, we've been talking about is the whole, you know, as you as you mentioned your sob story here, Tier, about you know going a little too soon there, going five days too early maybe in your in your push for the higher grader rifts, but. I don't know if people in softcore really do it. I mean, I guess you, you probably try a little bit to get that on the leaderboard, but I, I know a lot of people in hardcore, myself included, you're kind of saving up and waiting to make your big greater rift push for the last week or so. Yeah. So that way, if you die, you don't feel like I have nothing to play for a week, you know? Well, with, on, on softcore, it's more about kind of sandbagging because everybody's doing it, and then right at the end, they're like, okay, now I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take the highest spot in clan or among my friends or get the highest spot on the on the on the America leaderboards I possibly can. And and by the way, I have a shout out to, to anybody in Inkw who who listens to this podcast. Uh I, I just I just took the number one solo demon hunter spot in Inkw again. And so I, I'd be really happy if somebody took it from me. So there's a call yeah, out. What is your level it, on that? It's just it's just forty four. I, I don't play the game that much. So so yeah, it, it should be pretty easy for somebody to take a forty four. Yeah, that's about what I'm hoping to get. I, I've done 40s. I, I've been doing 30s just routinely. I mean, like high 30s. I did a bunch of 38s of the day just in like eight, eight or ten minutes. Yep. Yep. But, you know, it gets dangerous on for 40. I mean, you it can does. very easily get, you know, one or two shotted. So it you does. kind of put it off and wait, and I've been building up. I've been gambling endless quivers trying to get a really good ancient bombardiers. No luck yet, unfortunately. <laughs> you need I, just it. Get a bombardiers with, I finally got a bombardiers with discipline, which is nice to get another 12 discipline or 11 discipline, I think. Just, you know, just for one more smoke screen every now and then or whatever, right? But... But I, I'm definitely, you know, sandbagging, and you know, I'm doing 38s, and you know, just just blasting through them, you know, pretty much effortlessly. Yeah, so. just trying to get that gear. Yeah, I think upgraded a few more gears. I finally found. I, I had to switch to physical. I found a really like a perfect physical amulet on on Eye of Etlich. So this is, physical is very strong, and I actually have a couple of things in prepping for season three. I'd love to talk about, but but that's I actually think physical is stronger than cold, but it takes more mechanical skill to play correctly, and and. It, it takes a little bit more time to kind of set up exactly how you're going to put your damage out. But once you do, that 600% rocket damage doubled is just absolutely insane when you get to big to elites or bosses. So, yeah, that, that's yeah, definitely get, the way to go. You get fewer, you know, swirly things, but you de I definitely notice I get, I get bigger kills on what I'm actually hitting. Oh, yeah. And I have a really good ancient, um, whatever this crossbow is that gives you extra piercing on your projectiles. Yeah, the berries, that's... You luck yeah. out. That's the best possible one that you can get out of the out well, of the heavy crossbows. It. Yeah, yeah, that's a really. Yeah, good. I got a really good ancients roll in it too, and I, you know, I got it doesn't have res reduced resource cost unfortunately, but it does have ten percent in the sock. Obviously, I you know I socketed it and stuff. So yeah, nice. it's got almost a thousand decks and vit, and I you know the vit's not really required, but it, it certainly doesn't hurt in hardcore. In hardcore, yeah, that's a big yeah, deal. I mean, that's like yeah, it's one hundred and fifty k hit points or something just from that. So in hardcore, I take that over that like six to seven percent cooldown reduction any day of the week. I mean, that's going to keep you alive. Yeah, so I really have, I really can't improve my gear. I mean, except I'm getting some ancients. I, I recently here I'm getting Demon Hunter stories again. Oh no, oh no, it's an hour long of Demon Hunter <laughs> stories. <laughs> but if you haven't, if you haven't done reduced resource cost on your gloves and bra and shoulders, it makes so much difference. I mean, that plus Pride's Fall, I'm at like 49 percent resource cost reduction just for everything, mm. and that's awesome. I mean, just for discipline as well. I mean, you get so many more smoke screens and stuff. But you just really notice it. I mean, you get like two or three more shots on a full load. I mean, I'm hardly ever out of a hatred now. Mm. T6 is just absolutely ridiculously easy. I mean, it's, it's like not even fair. Yeah, you just look at the monsters next. I mean, you just run through and just one shot. I mean, literally one shotting elites. Yep. I mean, I was. I mean, T6 was easy before, you know? I was doing 35s pretty easily. But once you can do like 38s easily or 40s easily, T6 is just, just, I mean, you're like, what is this? What am I doing here? Yeah. You know, I was just like a T8 to play. It just seems it just seems completely farcical that you're just running through and one shotting stuff. I mean, you're one shotting things in like in like four player games. Right. You know, I mean, I mean like two shotting elites. You know, four shotting guardians. Oh, like, this is just stupid. Oh, no, you're right. Like I, I I went into a public game the other day just to see what was going on, and and I actually just just ran ahead of everybody and just just killed all the monsters in a, in a regular rift by myself. With one shotting, one shotting them, and and I'm not, you know, and I'm just a really casual player, but anybody can do that now. It's just, it's way, way, way too easy. Oh, you demon hunters! <laughs> and then you get, in, and then, well, with softcore people in the rifts are like on T6 and like in like rares, you know. Yeah. It's like, please carry me and find me legendaries. Yeah. <laughs> we were joking. That I did a post today about a guy, this guy, Luke to Rift, who's doing some content for us, and he did this thing about you know fastest greater rift times clears. He made little bar charts and graphs. 
And I mean, I don't play much softcore except on PTR sometimes. And people just always tell me that, you know, in, when you get in a hardcore greater rift on T6, everybody knows what they're doing. You know, you might be one person's kind of new to T6 and kind of hanging back and getting carried a little maybe. But apparently, like everybody, you know, I always hear these stories about softcore. You just get in there and people are just like, you know, cane set and yellows. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, what are you even doing for the last two months of this season? How are you in such shitty gear? It's like, it's like you die and lose it all, you know? <laughs> or more appropriately, I mean, soft, why, are you, you, why are point? you queuing for this in that gear? Yeah, why are you queuing? And, and the, and the, but the thing is, no one even cares. Because, I mean, you, they can't, aside from the fact they can't die, there's probably always going to be one person that can just uber stomp the entire level, and, and they're just yeah. like, whatever. So. And you just carry them to get better experience and more items. So what do you know? You're like, yeah, whatever. Yep, yep. I mean, I've done, I've done carries in, in hardcore. I mean, I, I can carry whoever. Just get in the game, and I'll just kill stuff. And they're, you know, people who are just brand new. Like, they're doing T3, T4, you know? And they're like, oh, Flux will carry us. Let's get in T6 with him. <laughs> I'm like, whatever. I get more experience, you know? Yep. <laughs> it takes me one more shot per crowd or something, you know? Yep. But, but, yeah, you know, I'm pretty awesome, so it's easy that way. Small thing for a giant. So, uh, moving along to less obnoxious topics. So, what are you guys planning on for Season 3? I mean, are you going to, you know, it's, it's what, a April 10th, I believe, is the start date? Yeah, that's right. The evening of Friday, when I have to work, of course, and won't be available. I have to work all weekend. So I, once again, I'll be I'll be starting my season three character on Monday. When everyone else is already, you know, in, in T four. But uh, it's nice to have Fridays off. <laughs> <laughs> so are you guys planning on a super ladder rush? Have you are you going to apply try different characters than previous seasons? I mean, are you are the same more of the same thing? What is your plan here? Uh, I'm trying something different each season. I think um, you know it's funny because this season was hey I'm finally diving in on on hardcore. You know, I'm actually going to give that a shot and see where I can get. Um, and like I said, the uh, the wizard was my first. So trying to figure out, you know, just how to play hardcore without being a complete noob. Um, <laughs> so I'll probably expand just, a little. Just for bit. yellow stuff and cane set. That's really all you need. Oh, good. Thanks. I'll I'll do that. You can next totally time. level up fast that way. Yeah, that's awesome. Uh, just queue up the T6 and you'll be ready to roll. <laughs> so I, I'm actually considering uh, maybe going Demon Hunter this next uh, run. Um, my best demon hunter. Yeah, you don't see many of those. Probably the dark was side. actually uh, cane set and yellows. Um, you know, on a normal softcore character. So I don't know a lot about him, and that was about the, uh, where I was on Wizards too. Um, so I, I think it's just fun to try a different class each. Uh, you know, each season uh, as your main. You know, and obviously you can make alts and that kind of thing. But um, yeah, I might start one of those, or uh, either that or the barb. Just barbs are looking so sweet. Um, for season three, so I think those will be a lot of fun to play too. So I'm a little bit torn, but I'm thinking maybe a demon hunter. Mm. What is your plan, uh, MJ and SPAC? <laughs> Let's see. Well, aside from prepping for season three, which I, I just want to call this out, anybody that does not have a good focus and restraint needs to go get one right now. Like get them and hold them, and and so that you're gonna like have the items that you need for the next uh, season starts. And the patch goes. You on. can't use items you find in the season. Yeah, you can was, use it for three days before. I'm just saying for anybody that yeah, for for non seasonal. But as far as seasonal goes, I'm definitely hit going with the monk this season. I, I really like the changes they they made or the new sets, and I'm really excited about uh, dashing strike. I that that definitely. Have you, have you tried it out on the PTR? I I have not. I've done I've just played a ton with dashing strike as it stands right now, and the and the the fact that I can dashing strike even more all over the map like. Is would be super awesome to me. So I'm I'm and definitely going twelve thousand five hundred percent damage. <laughs> yeah, yeah do, do a Dragon Ball Z hit to somebody every single time. <laughs> yeah, it's over nine thousand there. <laughs> yeah, I have used that. I tried that out a few times. We have this whole article we're doing on the site. This guy wrote. He hates the set basically. He hates the changes to Thousand Storm set, and he has all these ideas for what he wants to do. And we keep trying to post it. And every time he he get a new draft done, they would they would change that set in the patch again. He had to he had to go back to and rewrite a whole thing about it again. I I, I was agnostic about it. I hadn't really tried it. And I went and tried it on the PTR. I really enjoy it. I mean, it's a little bit spastic in terms of just dash, dash, dash so much. That's awesome. But it's almost it's almost like you just, you know, you kind of punch things and then you pull and you get a bunch of stuff and then you do a dashing strike and everything explodes. It's go. not all that different than the old, you know, kind of the, the bell dropping, you know, the pillar dropping we do now. Mm -hmm. Except instead of dropping a pillar, you dash and you do, you know, ten times the damage of a single pillar, right? So... Is that the uh, the biggest damage bonus on an item in the game for a skill? It's got to yeah, be probably. right. Yeah, I think it is. Well, what what is Reinhardt like? Eleven thousand percent? Ten thousand. Yeah. Reinhardt's ten thousand percent. Yeah. Yeah, and it's funny. I mean, it was like nine thousand percent or seven thousand or something on the PTR, and then they're like, let's make it twelve thousand. Now twelve thousand five hundred. 
double the it, thing is, not it's double still, it again. It still kind of sucks. <laughs> yeah, Jay Wilson was involved in this. It still kind of sucks tactically because you don't get any visual cue of where what you've affected with the skill. You know, it's not like a barbarian's dashing where you kind of get a little a little swoosh of light kind of thing. You're just like in a and, new position. Just boom. Yeah, I mean, the monk just teleports basically. So you're just here and then you're there. And everything between you has a giant number pop up when, over their heads when they die. And sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. But you just you, it's really hard to tell if something's a little bit off to the sides if you're going to hit them or not. It's just it's weird they didn't put some kind of visual in there, even if, even if it's only for you to see it and not other people in the game. I, I just don't know why there's not sort of a shaded area that would give you some sense of what the AOE is. I mean, you can, you can kind of tell it by feel, but it just seems really strange. And obviously, if you don't get the crit when it's 12,500% damage, it's, it's you, know, mu- you know, exponentially less damage. <laughs> yeah. so, I mean, you're getting crits and they're, you know, 500 million or something like that. I don't even remember what I was getting, but they were gigantic. It was one-shotting Guardian. It was one-shotting Elite suit just all the place in T6. But if you don't get the crit, it's like, you know, 50 million or something, right? So... And but it's funny because you see when you see fifty millions in like the white numbers they seem tiny but then you realize it's actually it's actually a really big damage you know you might be getting crits for five million but they're big yellow numbers and they seem more impressive but yeah yeah I'm just surprised they didn't do anything about about making that more visual or more tactically uh, you know you just don't get a sense of what you're doing so much but obviously if you play it for a while you get used to it right so. yeah yeah yeah. That's yeah your monk doesn't go super saiyan. Yeah, the only thing I'm worried about though is currently when you're playing on the live server, you find a thousand of those you know, that goddamn set. You find a thousand thousand storms when you're trying to find Sunwukos <laughs> or Inyas. And now that you're trying to find thousand storms, I'm afraid I'll only find Sunwukos and Inyas again because the game knows what you want and it makes sure not to give it to you. Trolls you really hard. Yeah, that's all Blizzard games. Yeah, wait till you're trying to find an Italia set. You know, how you have five thousand Italia sets right now. Yeah. And you don't want them because all you want is Marauders. Yeah, just wait, dude. <laughs> You're going to find 17 Marauder shoulders before you finally get an Natalia's helm next, next season, I guarantee it. Most likely. And Josh will be there laughing, laughing and laughing. Cackling wildly. They'll, they'll bring back Jay Wilson just to laugh at you when you can't get your item. <laughs> so, um, question about Greater Rifts. Uh, especially, about, I'm curious about Softcore or Greater Rifts, so I guess you can answer this in a little bit mid midgen space. Mm-hmm. How do people, you know, you see, like, like, just based on the whole, you know, say if the highest... You know, if, the, if the good average Demon Hunter is 44 or something in hardcore, it's like 47 or 48 or 50 in softcore. Right. How many tries are you? Have you really pushed for higher greater rifts on your softcore characters? Either one of you guys. Mm. And did it? Did you do like 20 fishing expeditions before you finally got one that was just perfect? And how would that have been different if the fishing might have been? You know, if the fish might have eaten you instead of the other way around, mm. right? Because hardcore fishing is dangerous. Yes. You know? mm-hmm. Uh Well, you want I. You want to go ahead on this one, or do you want me to, to pick it up? I don't run a lot of softcore anymore, um, so <laughs> no, I don't. Uh, I don't really I, know I'm, anymore how that is. I'm too high highbrow for those things. Yeah. Um, well, I, I will say that you know, certainly your items. Let's start by saying this: certainly your items affect how far you can get in greater rifts. But in reality, what really affects greater rifts is the map, the monsters. And within those monsters, what affixes the elites have, and probably the Rift Guardian too. So, I mean, that's all just so so random. And so, I guess with that said, I mean, I haven't pushed super duper hard. I'm pretty pretty casual, honestly, when I play. But I mean, people are just dying left and right. Literally, like they have because everybody's totally damage built. They explode instantly. Like, the, you're just watching people die over and over again in softcore greater rifts, and you're just... Well, I mean, you get, you get over, like, 45, and you're getting one shot by everything anyway. Everything. You, you know, like, there's no point in double unity anymore, no, you know? No, there's, there's no point. It's not a question. So you just go glass cannon and hope for the best. Right, <laughs> and, and I don't... Like, I've seen some of those greater rift clears that people have done in hardcore. I think, like, somebody... I don't know what they've got this season, but I, last season people had, like, 50 with a Demon Hunter... I don't know. Yeah, there's a 49 Demon Hunter right now, but I've seen. How it the do level. they do that? I mean, because it's not a question. I'll let you, I'll let you know next weekend. But um. yeah, yeah, maybe. <laughs> but but it's not a question really of of whether or not you're going to die. It's a question of when you're going to die. And and I mean, like like for example, I was I was running one I think 45s earlier today with some friends, and I had uh, my awareness passive, and I had um, Countess Julia's on. Because I was just like, I, I don't want to die. And it didn't matter. Like, 
you know, you'd get hit by, th- you know, thunderstorm would, would rock them, sock them you before you could get away from it or whatever. You would just insta die. There's nothing you can do. So I don't know how people are doing that. At the, I need to go look at somebody's stream or something because that stuff's just straight crazy. Yeah. I've done mid 40s on the PTR. I think I did a 46 on the PTR in softcore, but I died like seven times. Yeah. You know? I mean, yep. I mean, I, w- I was on, I was doing, like, I could have done, I could have done the greater rift in like, like nine minutes. But all the death penalty times added up to like fourteen fifty. Exactly. You know? Yeah. And and I really and like that's that. That's not penalty, an issue but... in hardcore. So yeah. yeah. And yeah. I think that's probably where Blizzard wants it too. Um, I mean, I I think given the choice between oh the rift kills you before you can kill it, or the rift just has too much health and you can't clear it, they'd probably yeah. rather it kill you because the other way is just boring. So they would prefer yeah. that you agree. know the damage scale's too high. Do you guys have a sense of? I asked this on the on the podcast with um, Katniss and Nineball today, and neither of them had an answer for it, and neither do I. Do you have a sense of how much greater rifts progress in time? So, say you can clear your best rift in ten minutes on say you know so so pick whatever rift. I mean, it can be twenty, it can be thirty, it can be forty. You know, obviously it depends on your character. But just in general, say you can clear rift X in say ten minutes on average game. Mm. What would you expect to be able to get up to? Like four higher, six higher, eight higher? Is it or is it so random that you can't even have the baseline to determine from? It's too random. Yeah, and I think it depends on your character too. Um, yeah. You know, because you you may have a character that's got low toughness for you know where you're at on on the highest rift that you've cleared thus far. You know, so uh, you might step into a rift above that, and you know that may be your cap because you're not going to be able to take those hits um, and there's going to be too much coming at you. So, yeah, I mean, I think it depends a lot on the character. It depends a lot on your build. Um, There's just too many factors really to say for sure. I mean, obviously there's a a gradient there, you know, well, not a gradient, but uh, there's some kind of graph, a parabola, you know, um, where you'll top out. It's it's expensive. The the damage increase and the hit point increase on monsters, as far as I understand, if you were to graph it, it's actually somewhat almost exponential. Not it is exponential. exponential it's, like, yeah. it's like 16% more hit points per rift. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, so it's... And obviously that's that's exponential, yeah, that's uh, cumulative. So, repeating, yeah. of course. But so no one has an answer to that question. So, I mean, it's, it's hard. I mean, I've done a million rifts, and you know, obviously your character gets stronger over time, you know? So at one point, like, the best you can do is 25, and you're like, okay, I could maybe do a 28 now, but it'll be hard. You know, but it's it's obviously it's just very different in hardcore, especially because you have to worry about dying so much. Yeah. And once yeah. you get to a certain level, you know, like I've been talking about, once you get up into the high 30s, you know, you better have double unity, and you get over 40, and it's like, double you know, a couple of thunderstorms and a frozen orb, and you're dead. You know, yeah. you just got to really be careful. Yeah, I, mean, no, I, got I, I ran. In. Go, ahead, go, go ahead. ahead. I got a little scared doing trials, <laughs> you know, because trials is that whole experience, yeah. but. I've, I've lost a hardcore trial. Man. Yeah, I mean, it's like you, know, you do it all all at once because it scales up. Uh, you know, it's not like uh, pushing higher greater rifts where you're going one rift at a time. Each rift takes you ten ten minutes or more. You know, uh, so, but yeah, you're right. It's 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 funny how that scales exponentially, endlessly, um, and we'll probably eventually get to the point, obviously, where people are pulling sixties solo. But it's going to take well, a little while. They were on the PTR with the IK case. Yeah, they were. <laughs> they nerfed it, but yeah. Yeah, I had a I had a hardcore die on Europe like in season one. I mean, I had I had just gotten the good Marauder six, and I was doing the fire build with multi shot, and I was just kind of fooling around in a rift without using double unities. And suddenly, I got like if you get like a really easy spawn like thirty four or something like that, suddenly you're on forty, oh, you know yeah. that kind of thing. And mm-hmm. you've got exercise. Or you can get an easy, you know, if you yeah, if you don't get. You, know, you don't get you know sand golems or something, and and suddenly you just clear one much faster than you've been used to it, and it jumps up six higher. It's like okay, that that's you know that's two torments higher suddenly, right? So, and you know I got I got a winged assassins, and and two, one of them just you know lipped out this one shot <laughs> at me. Yep. And I ran into the you know that that triggered my proc. I ran into the corner, and another one came out and one shot at me while I was waiting to, while my town portal was counting yeah. up. You know, like three seconds. Oh man. And it's like you know you just get one nasty monster, and suddenly you're a little higher than you think. And I got a really good screenshot of my corpse falling off the edge of the level there, you know, <laughs> like this tumbling rag doll down into nowhere. Yeah. Not even showing the, you know, the deed screen yet, just showing that. So, and I look at that at night and I sob silently. <laughs> and only Kitty can make me feel better, and I give her snuggles because she loves Daddy. Oh wait, am I going off topic? Yes. Yeah. So last thing I have question, and we can get into some of the uh, tavern talk stuff that you guys wanted to comment on. 
how do you feel about gambling right now, and will having a 900 blood shards max cap make it better in Season 3? Uh, it won't. <laughs> It'll just mean I have more yellows in my bag, is all. So, I mean, sure, whatever, you can you can gamble more at a time. But I'm never capping out uh, most of the time anyway. You know, even if I'm running from full empty to, you know, through the highest rift I can get, I'm getting maybe 200 blood shards. So... I don't see that it's going to make much difference. It'll be convenient, but it's not going to be a game changer. So would gambling specific weapons really make a difference? I mean, is that, the, is that your complaint about gambling? I mean, I mean, the only the only one is it's funny because demon hunters are the only ones that don't really suffer from that, you know, because you just get ranged mm-hmm. weapons. But every other class, you know, you want a mace and you get a bunch of axes and swords, and you're like, hey, this sucks. Yeah, I mean, they and maybe we can cover that more specifically in the uh, when we go over some of the stuff in this tavern talk because they did addru- yeah. address that specifically. Um, sure, you, you know, letting people pick the uh, the weapon type, I think, would would be one solution. The question is, if it does it go too far? And I think that's what they're worried about. They're worried that you know, once you hit um, level seventy, you're just going to start dumping all of your blood shards that you get into the correct weapon type for the quote unquote best in slot. Nobody's ever going to try anything different. So um, I, I think that in in one sense, they might just be right about that, and that's probably why they don't want to do it. I agree with them completely. So yeah, I, I I I hope they never do that, and I don't think they ever will. So I'm happy about that. No, I mean you could probably increase the odds just by maybe sectioning them off a little bit more. So say um, you know right now they're one handed and two hands. Maybe you make some arbitrary distinction. Say um, okay, so you can gamble on sharp things and exactly things. something like that. You know um, maybe one thing has uh, maces stabs and uh, wands, and then the other is uh, swords, daggers, and axes, or something like that. That will never happen, and Jay Wilson laughs at your pain. Mm. <laughs> so will higher blood shard cap? I mean, I, I'm not saying I don't want higher blood shard cap, but I've kind of gotten used to gambling pretty regularly now. Yeah. I mean, once you're doing T6s in like three or four minutes, you know, you, you kind of get used to i got to gamble every other one or something like that. And especially if you're doing like GR30, you know, high 30s, you're getting 200 at a pop, you know, or 250 a pop when you get into the 40s. Yeah. And you got to, you just sort of, after every one, you just, you know, you have your 30 seconds and you just go over and drop some quivers or amulets or whatever, right? So. Yeah, now I think there's, they've split those up, right? So T6 standard rift will close instantly in a, uh, in a solo game. But a greater rift. No, nah, not, not anymore. That was a bug. Oh, was it it's actually? It's back to thirty seconds. Okay, great. Yeah. So I mean, that was that was the best bug ever. Then it went away. Maybe yeah. they should do that just for the regular rifts. I can understand with a greater rift, but yeah, it's like you got thirty seconds. Go use it. You know, grab your stuff. I I really miss the whole instant gym upgrade thing. I mean, that is, I I just hadn't I hadn't done gyms in a while and saw you know in the live server and I looked and I had like two hundred and thirty of all of mm-hmm. them. And I was like, "Oh my God, this takes forever!" You know, you start, you just, you know, you queue up fifty-seven transmogs, and you know, you just all tab the game and, and go check your email or something, you know, or go get a snack. Wait, so are you upgrading all of your gems as they come in? I I just hold marquee in my stat in my inventory, and then I upgrade them to to imperial and put the imperials in the stash. So I just I just build up marquees until I finally get around to doing them all at once. Oh. And on the PTR, you build them all at once in three seconds. You know, yeah. you do the entire stack all at once. And I kind of got used to it on the PTR. I hadn't done it, and I just sort of been ignoring it in on the live. I'm not sure why I even care. I've got you know hundreds of all the Imperials anyway. I'll never use them all, but yeah, you just kind of feel like you should once in a while. I just I just noticed like like a couple of days ago. I've I've been doing a bunch of, you know, I I seem like I'm getting. I don't know if you guys are doing the same things. I'm getting so many of the goddamn gym hoarder lately. Yeah, I get like 15 of those for every blood shard. Goblin. I've been getting a ton just, of Odin's collectors, which is like, oh great, woo, yellow mats. <laughs> That's the Actually, best. I, 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 I'm, I'm happy getting, to get the I've been getting guy. crazy, Jim. Yeah, really. So I don't know. I haven't gotten many of those because I, I don't. You don't need materials either at this point, I'd imagine. But I keep getting. I just keep getting tons of gem hoarders, and every one of those you're getting, you know, two or three of every imperial of everything. It seems like so. Problem. The one funny thing we had, I mentioned we were doing. Um, we were doing Uber, Ubers the other day, so while well, we were doing keyboard and keyboard and farming, somebody got the vault in Act Two in the Dogger Oasis. So <laughs> nice. I had not done that all all season two. I had not done the vault, so I got all the achievements for doing that. But speaking of gyms, you know, we got like three more gym hoarders inside that place. Yeah, that was probably the luckiest thing that happened to me in season two. Was uh, I think I hit. 70, yeah, I hit 70, and about 20 minutes later, I got the first and only um, vault run. So I was like, oh, great, I'm set. Got my gem, got my, a nice gold, got my bonus. gold. Yeah. 
So that was my thing about gambling, and you guys don't sound totally satisfied, but totally not unsatisfied. Why don't we just get into the whole super Kadala thing now? Because you want to talk about that for the for the uh, the tavern yeah. talk. So one of you tell us what they said about super Kadala and what it might do, and how that would make everything all better. Go ahead, uh, DIY design. Yeah, I guess I I mentioned this. So they've mentioned a couple of different things about changing the way Kadala works, and they talked about what they called super Kadala. Um, you know, which mostly they wanted to revolve that around um, ancient weapons, making them easier. So they said, you know, they've heard a lot of complaints about gambling and how especially it's difficult to find a good weapon um, because basically it's ancient or no-go. Um, and they mentioned maybe we can have some kind of way of letting Kadala, um, you know, uh, drop uh, weapons, better weapons more frequently um, or even allowing you to collect up a whole bunch of um, blue and yellow items, um, and then maybe craft those into an ancient of some kind. So you could uh, collect, say, a whole bunch of yellow um, maces, two-handed maces, if you were looking for a furnace, and then bring them to Kadala, or actually that may make more sense on um, Smithman, uh, and just have them forge that into a random ancient weapon of that type. Um, which sounds interesting. It sounds like they're going the root of, okay, we we have a random system in place, um, so why don't we add a supplementary system that is more guided by the player, but requires much more work and time? Um, you know, and you can use that as a backup for when you're just not getting the, the drops, the rolls that you need. So, um, I don't know, it looks interesting. What do you guys think about that? I like that there was an item type thing. I mean, it's been so long since item types mattered. Mm-hmm. I mean, for a while, and, you know, you actually cared for a while. I mean, remember you had to find white item types to do crafting? And, like, you would have to hunt every, like, you know, armor rack in Act 5. Yeah. Like, I, I, I need to find a bracers, you know, I need to find a quiver. That was the best part when I had the patch, and you had to find a, a white quiver to make the, the, you know, like, the Archfiend arrows. There were no white quivers. There have never been white quivers. They were only ever blue or yellow. <laughs> So it was actually impossible to do quivers and, and sources and mojos because there were no white versions of those ever dropping in the yeah. game. So I remember spending like, a, like an hour, like hours one night, just hunting every, going to the um, Battlefields of Eternity yep. where you just get all those endless armor racks. And, and you do Act 1, you go into the cathedral levels, you get lots of weapon racks. And just trying to find a white quiver to make this stupid new recipe. And of course it wasn't possible because they didn't even exist. But <laughs> thanks, Jay. <laughs> thanks, Obama. <laughs> But that's, it's, it is interesting, the whole Super Kadala thing, where you'll actually have to pay attention to what... I haven't paid attention to the item type of a blue or yellow item in, like, two seasons. Yeah. I just, they're, just, they're just materials to be, you know? Well, I got a but question. you'll actually then. need to find, like... You'll need to find, you know... I, okay, now you need to find a, a blue crossbow to make your upgraded crossbow or whatever, but, right? So but Where are you going to keep all these items? That was what well, I was going to ask. Well, <laughs> in theory, you'll take, them right, you'll take them right to Super Dala the second you find them, right? Oh, she, yeah, she's going to hold all of them for you, because you certainly aren't going to be holding them in your stash tab. I'm going to tell you that much. If you had to have, like, a screen full of blues or yellows to make your to make your ancient weapon, you know, yeah, now, that's a problem. I pray that there is a one-button solution to that if they implement this, you know, where we have um, hit the button, Kadala stores all of the blue and yellow items in your bag for crafting into other stuff later, you know. Um, and that would actually be kind of fun, too, if you had the uh, the opportunity of doing all of your item types all at once um, because then you have the option of, you know, oh, well, I'm, I'm almost finished on maces, but uh, I've got a sword ready because I've stashed 300, you know, one-hand swords or whatever. Yeah, I'll just go ahead and craft that and see what happens, you know. It's not any worse. What do you guys think of the idea of being able to upgrade a normal legendary to ancient, but say you need to find three of them or five of them or something? And again, that's obviously an inventory space issue. But what if they kept a counter or something, you know? What if Griswold said, you know, if you find five furnaces, then you can turn that into one random ancient furnace. And, you know, he keeps, obviously that's a whole other level of interface somewhere where it's telling you how many furnaces you've ever, you've ever salvaged or whatever. But, I mean, that seems like a way, you know, because, I mean, if you want to find a certain kind of ancient item, you know, you need it for your build or whatever, you know, it's like a, like a star metal Kirkuri or something like mm-hmm. that, right? Where you have to have this specific item, and if you don't find it ancient, you're, never, you're always going to be underperforming. But if you found, of course, no one's ever found five non-ancient star metal kakuris because they're like the rarest item in the game. But, but you know, I mean, sort of like the next patch, you know, Natalia is, is getting a big buff to the to the item set, 
and they added a property to the to the crossbow to the hand crossbow where it rolls with a bonus to rain, rain of vengeance damage but you're going to you're going to need endlessly I'm already planning the endless hunting I'll be doing endless gambling of one-handed weapons trying to find an ancient yep. Natalia's crossbow yep. yeah and I found tons of normal ones but it's really hard to find an ancient one and I I think of you know the super kadala thing what if you could just save up this one particular item and then trade in three or five of them? Or would that be... You know, it sounds good. Um, I mean, as players, we want that stuff. We want free things. You know, give us the stuff. We put in the work. Give us the stuff. Um, and obviously, you know, the, the devs, I think, are very cautious about putting that stuff in because they do not want a situation where people math it out and they say, okay, well, uh, all you got to do is you got to play for this long and then you're going to end up with your best in slot item. You know, they still want that element of randomness. Um, I think this really ties in with one of the other things that I, I wrote down as a possible conversation point here, and that was that they mentioned that um, they still have this connection between uh, rarity and power. And I'm wondering if you guys think that's a good thing or not, because I'm, I'm, I have my thoughts, but I'll, I'll let you guys go first. Well, let me get back. Let me, let me back step one point here to ancient weapons for a second, because I, I had actually put some notes in about this from the fireside chat and that's what this started about like i, I you're I like that fireside chat like it was fdr yeah, FD, <laughs> FD, fdr wyatt chang pretty similar yeah yeah well i don't know evil geniuses uh we'll fight them on the beaches yeah like but your your guests last week i think were too nice on this topic like i i ancient well the shit they, they had just cast their blue yeah I, i'm hey, I, hey, I was, careful was i was on next me last week because <laughs> cause ancient weapons, okay, they are straight awful. And you you put a vote actually on on your website, right, on Ink Gamers, and and I actually voted to have them removed from the game. I do not now. I know that's not going to happen, but honestly, let, let let's look at it for a second. The odds of getting any weapon at all that rolls well, like it's going to be good, it's going to be an upgrade that, you, or you can tr make it an upgrade through, you know through enchanting or whatever, what the odds of that are, are definitely less than 10%, right? And then on top of that, now... Well, I have one, so the odds are fine by my opinion. So uh -huh. go ahead. Same here. I, 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 have the best, I have the best ancient heavy crossbow I've ever seen in the entire game. I've never seen anyone with a better one, but I still think it's crap. And what, But on top of that less than 10%, you then have a 10% chance there... Of, of it being ancient. So you're talking about, honestly, less than 1% chance in all cases of your weapon being an upgrade. That That's back to D3V, where things dropped on the ground and you were like, this is going to suck. Like, there was no way. The odds of something being good were way were so awful that you couldn't get excited about anything. Like, because it was like a 1 in a 1,000 chance that anything you found was ever going to be good. Like, I can't believe that they put this in the game based on all of the other really, really good changes that they have made, and then to drop ancient weapons on the game and be like, oh yeah, now now you have to get this to, to be competitive or viable, and your odds of getting it are really, really awful. It, it, I just don't get it. They, they, have, they have to do something to fix it, because it, it's, just, it's just kind of like oppressive. It, it makes, it, it's unenjoyable, so... Yeah, I'll end my rant. So you didn't vote for the whole gift of Ramalani to ancientize something or some other way to do it, Super Kadala? I, I think that Ramalani... You, you would just prefer not to have ancient, ancient weapons. So you like ancient gear, you just don't like ancient weapons? Well, I, yeah, exactly. Well, look, I think that you can't take them out of the game now, right? There's no way. But obviously... You can't unship yeah, the Yeah, like Ram... I, you could use the Ramalamas to like... Uh, which uh, We call it Ramalama Ding Dong among my friends. But you can use the Ramas to, to, to fix it, right? Maybe collect like three, four, five Ramas plus, you know, I don't know, 10 or 20 souls and some crafting mats and plus plus the ancient item you want to turn, or the, the non-ancient that you want to turn into an ancient. And you put all that together and you get an ancient out of it. So it would take a while to collect all that stuff together. It wouldn't be something you could just do over and over and over again. All right. So that that's a possibility, but I, it still just bothers me that you, they basically would have to put in a fix that I don't think is even good to solve something that never should have been put in the game in the first place. Never. never. See, do you think it's a prison of our own making, though? 
You know, is if is this an issue of okay, well, Blizzard put something cool in the game that happens rarely, and now players consider everything else to be garbage? Well, let let let's put it like this: if you go look at the majority of players, not necessarily now, but at the beginning of the season, almost every single person was using an ancient weapon that they had crafted, not something that had dropped. And that goes directly against what Blizzard wants. Blizzard is saying, we want you to go out there and we want you to find stuff. And we want it to be exciting to go through the game and look for things you want. But when your odds are so bad of finding something you want that everybody is running and crafting like a hundred of a weapon just trying to get that one that's good, that right there shows that there's a problem. And even now, if you go look at a bunch of people, a large portion of players are still using crafted ancient weapons because they've just never found anything at all that's good as a drop. And their odds of finding one are actually pretty low. But it's just funny because you're mentioning it. But I, I was using, before that, I, I was using the, an arcane barb, you know, which is crafted, of course. And I had also found the, 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 the bow that gives you bonus damage to things that have entangling shot on them. And that one, I was actually getting better results with that one in Greater Rifts just because it was such a nice damage buff for Guardians. Mm. You know, 25% more damage on Guardians would make up for the fact that I wasn't triple-shotting the whole rest of the way through. But, but yeah, and then I found this uh, Verizon, and it made it, it made it a clear, obvious... It was about about two or three Greater Rifts, basically two or three GRs higher just immediately just because of that one weapon. So, Which I think argues to your point that ancient weapons... But, you know, as we said, you can't put the toothpaste back in nope. the tube, you know? There are people expect these now, and it's it's. I think it's pretty analogous to the old situation of having sockets and weapons, right? Where if you didn't get a weapon with a socket, it was just garbage. And so eventually Blizzard said, okay, we'll give you a gift of Ramalandi and we'll give you enchanting. And you can now have socketed weapons all the time. And I, it seems like they might go the same route with ancient weapons, where those have become essentially mandatory for a proper build, right? So if everyone feels they have to have this, then eventually it seems like the devs are like, okay, we'll give you some way to get this other than just the incredibly long odds of the luck of the draw, yeah, right? Yeah. yeah. I wonder if maybe the... Um, what if they did Ancients a different way for, for weapons? Because right now, Ancient is just plus 30%, right? Like, that's the idea, just Ancient weapons, you know, uh, and they could retroactively apply this. I know that people... And let me preface this by saying that they probably will not do this because Blizzard is not in the habit of doing anything that drops people's numbers, especially in mass. Once they put something in the game, they usually attempt to adjust other things around it rather than removing it. But what if you didn't do straight, you know, additional 30% DPS to a weapon? Instead, you had, say, an additional fix, you know, something that would add uh, 10% elite damage or, you know, um, uh, area of effect damage or something like that. Just something different so that, you know, it wasn't just a straight number. Yeah. Because people like bigger numbers, dude. I bet oh. you're right. Yeah. Even Jay Wilson understood that. <laughs> you take it and you double it, and then it's yeah. all better. Yeah, until you double it, and then everything else is garbage because you doubled it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, I mean, but it seems like people just expect that. I mean, we had a whole, you know, we had a whole vote on this. You mentioned, you know, ancient weapon thing, and there was no clear opinion. But it seems like everyone wants them, and everyone has yeah, to have them. You have to. And. I, and Blizzard's solution is to make more weapons with awesome legendary affixes, so you'll have more options. So you'll, you know, currently you, you, I've found for some reason my Demon Hunter, I find Ancient Dawns like every other game, which is a crappy hand crossbow that has no legendary mm-hmm. affix on it. Like I've never found a good, you know, I would, I would kill for an Ancient Calamity. Oh you know? Of course, Calamity yeah, is much rarer to drop, uh-huh. but, but I find I have like, I had like six Ancient Dawns in my stash. I noticed the other day, I just threw them all away. They were all like, they weren't even good yeah, rolls, exactly. you know. I'm not not getting ancient Natalia's, not getting ancient Donetta's. It's always Dawn, and but if Dawn had some cool, you know, it made strafe triple damage or something, then maybe I wouldn't mind finding. You know, that's that's a good point. You know, that right there could solve it. I think that if if the weapons that are bad right now were simply given better better stats or or special abilities, then then definitely that could fix things, and and that would make you feel better. You'd be like, okay, even if I don't have the weapon that I wanted for the build I'm running, at least I have something that is fun to use and I have options. Options options make people happy. But but right now ancient weapons are, are taking options away and that's why they make me sad. Yeah. And they that's what they were they, they kinda did that with rings on the you know the PTR. There's so many as you mentioned, you know, focus and restraint yeah. earlier. And there's other stuff. Nagel rings got the awesome thing with the exploding <laughs> lunatics, which is like the greatest thing ever to so throw your mind. So that. fun. Yeah, that's gonna be fun. 
I did like a whole post about that, just like with like 40 screenshots. I was just running around having so much fun with that. And they buffed it since then. I made the explosions much more damaging. So it's actually tactical now. It's not just funny looking. But then, you know, there's multiple other rings. You know, Skull Grasp now has the huge whirlwind damage, that kind of thing. So I, and they said they're working on weapons heavily for that. There's not a whole lot of them in the, in the new patch. But, you know, in, in three months, in the next season, then maybe we'll have... Maybe you're, you'll change your tune on Ancients because there'd be lots of potential. If, if, they, if that's the fix, then I'd be very happy with it. I mean, it, that would be that would be beautiful. I'm... Well, I think they've as much as have said that that is their attempted fix. Um, you know, yeah, yeah so during that talk, talk, they're that like, "This is goal. this is what we're doing." We're you know, next patch, uh, next PTR, we're looking at adding more and more fixes to legendaries that don't already have one. Just trying to you know, or even changing fixes on things that are just flat out bad, so you end up with something that's much much better. So, any other tavern talks that stuff you wanted to guys? One thing that I I noticed across kind of the whole thing and. <laughs> This is going to be a little bit uh, um, game designy, but uh, I th I think it's really interesting watching these guys um, talk about their you know thoughts on the game and their um, priorities for changing the design because their priorities are often so technical. Um, you know, when they talk about things, they talk about things that um, do not come up in the forums ever. You know, they they may have an idea that never appeared on the forums. Um, you know, or a priority that has never appeared on the forums, and a lot of stuff happens in the community, you know, so I'm kind of surprised whenever I watch that to see how different some of their opinions are, um, you know, from any of the ideas that you see crop up on the numerous podcasts and websites and, again, the Blizzard forums posts and Reddit posts and all that kind of stuff. Um, I mean, did you guys have a sense that they were a little bit disconnected on a couple of things? Because I felt like they kind of were. I don't. I didn't get that. I, I think, you know, as somebody who has a little bit of experience with software design, I can tell you that a big part of what a designer does is take a lot of information from the end users and crunch that down into into numbers and data that that can then be used to to make changes to the software. And and it may not look on the surface like what they're saying is related, but it, it most likely, it, I thought it was in a lot of cases. I don't, I don't think that they, they don't understand their game or they don't play it or anything like that. I think they really do, and I don't think they're disconnected from what the community wants. I think it's just sometimes they, they, they talk in a way that's, that's kind of you know technical software developer nerd talk compared to how they ought, how they could interface with the community. And I'm not saying they're doing anything wrong. It's just. You know, it, we have as much a responsibility to listen to what they're saying as, as they have to say it in a way that we can understand. I think a lot of ways they're they're smarter than people in terms of bigger ideas, but also they I think they want to be bigger ideas. So like the, you know, one of the questions in the chat was can't, why can't we just convert three of one gym into another kind of gym that we want? You know, which would be a very easy band aid fix to put in there. So people who have you know five thousand topaz and they want the yeah. or whatever. And then they were like, well, we want, we want something that's cooler and better, and there'll be, like, crafting stuff, and you can use other materials, and it'll be something much more interesting yeah. than that. Which, you know, fair enough, but then it takes nine months to yeah. implement that, you know? Whereas they could have put the, the Band-Aid in eight months ago, and nobody would care about finding gyms they don't want anymore. And, and you know, maybe it's, sometimes it's the whole, are they too smart for their own good? And, and you know, it's the... I, I said this to Josh in, in some interview in the past with him. I said, you know, is, is, the, is the perfect the enemy of the good? And he said, I, I use that phrase all the time in design <laughs> meetings. And I'm like, not often enough. <laughs> but, I mean, I actually said that in one of the interviews I did with him and Wyatt on some, I think it was a, a Skype interview like two years ago. You know, I'm sure the transcript's on the site somewhere. But, you know, and jo I, I actually I said that. And Josh said, you know, he was like so amazed that, yeah, we have that same discussion. And in this case, is you know, is Super Kadala the enemy of just having a goddamn gift of Ramalani that makes something ancient, you know, or whatever like that. But... I mean, I, I, that's not really my suggestion. I mean, I think Gifford Ramalandi, it's funny, that's so hard to find until you don't need it, and then you have, you know, it's like cops in public restrooms, you know? Until you, and when you don't Where need it, you know, good luck, right? But once you've got, suddenly you've got five of them stacked <laughs> up. Okay, not stacked up, it's only a nice patch anyway, they're just side by side. But if they had a gift of Ramalandi that made something ancient, it would need to be much rarer, so then you'd be, it'd, be, it'd be almost as hard as finding the ancient in the first mm -hmm. place, you know? Like, it'd be this total jackpot if you found it, and then most people would never find one. Who, people who needed it are the ones who don't play that much, and they would never find one anyway, whereas people who play a ton in our Paragon 800 in Seasons, 
have 10 ancient weapons anyway. So, well, I mean, that's that gets back again to that that question is is it a good idea for a core design philosophy on this game to be that the rarer something is, the better it is. You know, and I I think that's the general that idea is, of Diablo. Yeah. I mean, that was one thing that drew me crazy about Diablo 2 is that there was no correlation between rarity and yeah. quality. You know, there were so many TC87 and 90 sets, you know, there was God was Griswold set that was that was for paladins, and there were three items in the TC ninety. It was the hardest set in the world to find, and they were crap. They weren't they weren't even any good. But you know you you could never of course you no one knew that because no one ever actually found it. But they've been better in D three about making you know the the one out of ten rarity you know calamities and wand of woe and that kind of stuff actually are the most powerful weapons or they were at one point anyway right. But and they're also the hardest ones to find. You know, Tasker and Theo was super hard to find, etc. Yeah, Star Metal Cookeries. Yeah, it's interesting because I think that's what they want, but it has uh, that design philosophy has its own issues. You know, because you run into these problems where you have a very, very committed, very um, devoted player base of competitive players who want to play on the uh, the leaderboards and that kind of thing, and you can have an entire season for someone be completely uh, just blown to hell by the fact that they've never found their ancient furnace. You know, um, somebody else does, and it gives them the season. Um, and I'm I'm not sure that yeah. that's what they want either. Um, I know that they want to have a a competitive you know um, community around the game. So I just find it really interesting that they have stuck to that. Um, and it doesn't seem like they're trying to change that value. Yeah, at least Furnace is just a stat stick. True. I mean, obviously it's a very big stat stick, but it's not like there's some... Like Star Metal Kukuri is the, is the obvious go-to thing, you know, where you, it's a, yeah, it's a like specific build only that is works only possible this with this item, and if you, don't, if you don't find it, you can never mm-hmm. play that build. And obviously there's other builds, and unfortunately they all have hats in the same item set, right, because they're Demon Hunter, or they're Witch Doctors, and you're screwed on hats, but... Anyway... Any other um, tavern talk things? I think we got cut, gotten that one covered mostly. Any other things you guys were dying to mention? Uh, I've, I've got. I made a list, so I, I could go on forever. You, you'd have to stop me. But uh, <laughs> you know, let's see. One of the questions. Well, pick pick your top one or two because we're getting uh, we're yeah, already over an hour. One here, of the so. things I'll pick some smaller ones. That, one of the questions that came up was one about perma immunities and if they're bad, and and the answer that the devs gave is that they they actually think or perma CCs, I guess. Yeah, because they, they, somebody said if perma immunities are bad, then wh- why is a perma root or a perma crowd control okay? And and the devs were like, we actually think that maybe that isn't good. It's not yeah, okay. but but this is the thing: if if perma CC is bad, then isn't perma insta death and 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 permanent zero counterplay insta insta gibbs also bad? Like like I I was really surprised by that answer because the game is designed right now in a way that. Things will instantly kill you, and the only way to stop them from instantly killing you is to permanently CC them. And so, if they take that away, then th- they also need to take away, you know, the fact that like an elite can endlessly jail you over and over again. There's no cooldown on it, and when it does, it is random, and it can take 100 zero you with something that you have no chance of ever dodging. So, if they're gonna fix that, they I sure as heck hope that they fix some of the other issues in the game right now that. That are that are no skill insta kills against players. So that was you one know, thing I definitely thought about. I hate to tell you, but uh, I think the answer to that is absolutely working as intended. Um, I, I know. And at a certain uh, point too, you have to think that there's, it's working as intended because it's the only way that it it could function. Um, you know, if you design these encounters in a way that. Um, they don't ramp up in difficulty is probably the only way that you can keep people from being one shot. Um, you know, the the one shotting is a byproduct of the fact that people are trying to push the hardest content that they possibly can. Um, and when you do that, you know, you're going to get to a point where numerically it's not going to work out for you. <laughs> you know, um, whether it's uh, bad luck or just straight damage numbers. Um, I don't think that there's a way for them to solve that because they don't want you to be able to run Greater Rift 130 just because, you know, they uh, they've capped the damage numbers for for mobs and just given them infinite HP that's, or something like that. Absolutely, that's not what I'm talking about. So, so let, let me let me see if I can explain this to you. So, for example, Winged Assassin is annoying, right? But if you're fast, you can avoid it, right? Mm-hmm. You have to be paying. Unlike, say, Thunderstorm. Yeah, and Thunderstorm. 
Well, thunder thunderstorm, you, can you actually it. cannot avoid. It you can avoid everything but the first well, pulse. The first pulse will hit you regardless. So that's pretty frustrating. But but there are certain abilities. In fact, there was a monster that I didn't realize could one shot you until I was running like I think a GR forty five or forty six earlier today, and the monster points at you and takes all your health. And it has it has infinite range, and he just points at you and you you die. And the, and it has nothing to do with any anything you're doing. That this is the kind of thing I'm talking. I'm talking about jailer. I'm talking about when frozen at high greater rifts hits the ground, you will instantly die from it. I'm talking about cold snap, AOE freezing the entire screen and literally killing everyone on the entire screen at once in a greater rift. That's the stuff that has nothing to do with damage. It has to do with the fact that there's no amount of player skill that can uh, get you out of taking the damage. There's things in the game, like, like I said, like like, char like monsters that charge. If you could, you could have dodged the charge. You could have dodged out of the way of the winged assassin. You can dodge out of the way of some of the some of the uh, what is it, the rift guardians that do things like put poison all over the ground or suddenly drop a huge, you know, spinning fireballs that, that go out in a circle, like, away from them. You can get out of that, even though it can be hard, and even the best players will mess up sometimes and die from it. But at least the option was there. So if you died, you think to yourself, oh, I could have got out of that if I had played better. But when you're in a scenario where you're saying, there's nothing I could have done there, there's no way I could have got out of it, there's no amount of skill or planning or strategy that would have ever got me out of that, that isn't fun. There's nothing about that that's fun at all. So. You know, I think I agree with you in terms of specific some of the the instances you noted, specific monsters that do certain moves or whatever that you can't get around, simply because they fall into a a realm of danger that is so much higher than anything else that's around. Um, so maybe those are the kinds of things that you can tone down. Um, but regardless, you're still going to have outliers. You know, um, even if you try to level everything across the board, when you get to a certain higher uh, greater rift level, you're going to have a situation where if you step on the fire path from Molten, not even the explosion, it will just one hit you. It'll just one hit you. Absolutely. You know, so so I don't yeah, see that fine. that's I don't see that that's a problem necessarily because at some point you have to have a, a high cap on where people are able to get, you know, regardless of skill level. Um, and it's going to happen if you keep pumping up those numbers. Yeah, you know, you'll get to the point where um, you know, just any random projectile will kill you. And, I mean, I don't know Absolutely. how good you are at the game, but no one's good enough to everybody. <laughs> oh, I, I <laughs> you know, agree. Or everything I the whole agree. Time. But, but in that scenario, like I'm saying, I am, I he's, he is the boss. <laughs> he, he drinks wine, and then he plays. I haven't died all season, therefore <laughs> yeah. I must be I mean, good. like I said... Or else I'm just staying in, I'm staying in GR37 with GR45 Like gear, I said, maybe tone down some of those things. Tone down, um, you know, uh, the thunderbolts that you get. Um, tone down maybe the leap, you know, uh, or slow it down, you know, the leap on, no, I, uh, I love, on I the think assassins or assassins something. Are fine. Um, I, I... You know, maybe that exorcist, like, lightning bolt, you know, that one's pretty difficult to get out of. Um, <laughs> or, you know, Infinite Jailer put an internal cooldown on that. Sure, I mean, you can adjust those things, but you're going to get to a point, regardless of how well you adjust them, that someone's going to step into a difficulty that is just not manageable with the numbers. Oh, I, I agree. I agree, but but I guess I'm not talking about numbers and damage. When you have infinitely scaling damage, at some point you will die, and there's no way out of it. I'm, I'm talking about a scenario where there's just no way that you can, in any scenario, avoid taking that damage. And, and, and you know, even at low level, what I'd like to say here is that for us now that we've been playing the game a long time, right, when we go into, like, T6 and Jailer happens, it's no big deal. Who cares? But but I remember when when Reaper Souls first came out and I went into T6 and Jailer hit me and I was like holy crap I never knew that that could kill you in one shot I had no idea and now here we are back again you know like Greater Rift 45 46 or whatever and the same thing is happening it wasn't fun then it wasn't fun it's not fun now like zero counterplay is never fun and I think that that's just what I'm trying to to drive home here zero counterplay is never ever enjoyable. Well, I think it's fun for a Jay. But yeah, Jay is laughing us. every time we, we die. Yeah, I can't say I agree with you, but I, yeah, you have you make a good point. Well, then the whole trade-off is they've they've really made much better legendary gems, but of course, if you have three of those, then you can't go that high at greater rift anyway because you've you've lost all your DPS mm -hmm. or most of your DPS. 
So you can you're basically limiting yourself. You know, you're having survival you don't need because now you can't kill stuff unless well, that's you're a trade off but... though. And and I'm okay with that. Like maybe you can get squeeze more DPS out of your gear in some other way and, and use that defensive gem. Like traits options are good. Options are great. Who's complaining about that? Nobody. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. One shot me all day. At least then yeah. I have to take credit for it. <laughs> So we need a party role-based game like WoW now, basically, where you've got characters who are completely mega tanks with all their gear, and they can be the ones in the front who take the damage that would one-shot the oh, casters Flex, and the healers who are in the back row. <laughs> don't, don't do it. But of course, we don't have that in Diablo 3 where everyone, everyone is sort of a you know everyone is a glass cannon and a healer and a tank, right? So, so uh, like one or two other points here before you wrap it up. Anything else you guys were dying to get to from the tavern talk? You got anything else? Nope, not me. Okay, I'll, I can I can leave it at that. I don't need to keep running my. I have no workable means for the whole legendary gym shared tab interface, oh, I but agree. I would love to see that. Yeah. Especially with the season coming on in, we're all going to have you know four of the same gyms now. I all didn't even know together. that was in WoW, like because I don't play that game and never have. And and when I saw that, I was, I was like, oh, that'd be great. Apparently, it's new. It's only in the newest oh. patch. Because like I, I my nine ball, we mentioned this on the on the on the uh, the sanctuary sweatshop <laughs> podcast. And Nineball was like, I haven't played, he hasn't played whatever the newest version of it, whatever the, the post Cow King, the post uh, Panda uh, King Warlord's patch. Dream, yeah. And he, did, he didn't even know what it was, but it's apparently it was yeah, something added just in the newest patch. But... Launched in the last patch. And we were trying to figure how that would even work in D3. I mean, like, you know, cause, because legendary gems are not virtual items unless you, it was allowing you like, to like, well, this clone is the, them or the something. Well, this is the way that they do it in WoW, and it's a clever system, is you have a menu with all of the different ones that you have and all of the upgrades that they have, because you can't upgrade them. Um, and then when you right-click them, it literally just generates uh, a copy of that item into your inventory. Um, so that would work just fine, you know, here, where you wouldn't have to keep anything in your bank. Whatever you... So you just throw away the lower level one from the exactly, you had yeah. Or, or you know, what? I mean, hey, if you use an upgrade at that point, they can probably just tie it into the system where once you hit the upgrade and it, it goes to the next level, all of your gems across your characters just move to reflect that new that new level that you've hit. Idea that I threw out on the other podcast was what if it was like a crafting recipe? And like so like your crafting recipe to make your level forty two Zay's gym or or whatever. Which I guess is kind of the same yeah, thing as a clone, a right? One, yep. Only it would, be, only it would, it would like centralize the production of them onto the jeweler or to Griswold or whatever, and you would just go make a new one whenever you wanted it, and you would just stick that in your ring and throw away the old one. So I guess it's kind of the same thing they're doing. That's how they're doing it. Wow, kind of just without the whole. Yeah, it's just recipe you go thing. to a certain vendor to do it, which is, I mean, that's fine. I guess it's not too much work to do that. Well, then it sounds like the problem solved. They should have that probably by the next weekend. Probably they can probably sneak that into the next patch with it really quick, right? <laughs> Okay, that's, no, that's, that's not the same code. Like. Yeah. Okay, so any other... We, we're at our time limit here. I would, a couple of the minor things, but they're not important. So uh, anything you guys are just ready for Season 3? You got, you're both... sound like you're uh, sitting out the last week of Season 2 for various reasons. You're catching up on sleep and stirring up on Mountain Dew and getting ready for the big uh, October, uh, um, yeah, April 10th Yeah, I think this is going to be a big one, too. Um, I think this patch and, and the next patch are probably going to be their some of their hallmark seasons with all of the things that they're adding and the new items and new sets and all that kind of stuff. Let's hope they don't cut it to six weeks all of a sudden out of nowhere. Yeah, that was a little just... bizarre. I, it, yeah, it I really like they probably they won't do that again. Time. Yeah, I, 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 it, even if they just say we're, it's going to be between three months and three and a half months, and that's going to give people a general time frame to plan around. They, they can't just drop a season that's super short or super long on us. I hope they don't. They can They can do anything they want. Well, they, they certainly can't do yeah. both of them so far that way. We've had two seasons, and they were super yeah. short Honestly, and super long. I just don't think long. they can help themselves. It's, it's yeah, time for Goldilocks. It, the issue seasons, is that right? they, and I think it shows with this particular patch, you know, all the stuff they put on the PTR, I think their players, they're excited. They're like, oh, look at all this stuff. I just want the new season. So they just drop it in. It, they can't help themselves when they've come up with new goodies to, to share with people. Um, but then... You don't want to get into a, a tinfoil hat stuff about that? <laughs> no, didn't, I think... Why a decree? Like, there was some reason they're planning seasons to be about three months, and because the first one went five months, they had to cut the second one way short to make up for it. Yeah. It's part of some grand evil scheme that's going to come to fruition nine or ten, yeah, nine or twelve on, months from now. Yeah, hold on, I'll adjust my antenna. Um, <laughs> no, I think they're just... Exactly. You can get, you can get UHF. They're just giddy school children, and they, they found a new thing, and they want to give it to everybody as quickly as possible. There you go. 
Why didn't they just wait wait two more weeks to start the PTR? Why did the PTR start so soon? Like it was PTR was like three weeks into the season. They had the PTR. Are we up. complaining about two? Why did they just wait? They could have they could have gone over here. They could have gone over here. Here we go. There's <laughs> there's too little content. There's too much content. <laughs> this, this, these beta tests. I'm tired of these darn beta tests. They they're giving them to us too early. I think I think we need to go back to D3V beta test where there there was no beta test. That's oh, it was so much better when we had to craft all of our gems one at a time. <laughs> yeah. Well, up to the up to the skeleton king was awesome though. You gotta admit that was pretty. That part was pretty good up to there. Just everything after <laughs> that was a mess. So many times. <laughs> yeah, and, the, and you still do too. Now, now you still do with the ring of royal grandeur God. in the process though. So. <sighs> okay, guys, we've gone long enough. Uh, thanks for your time. We've been talking about uh, season two and season three and the uh, tavern talk and the uh, the what'd you call it? The fireside chat. That was good. I like that. And then, uh, come back uh, next week for more uh, Diablo three podcasts. We'll be what will be next? That'll be the end of season two, right? That'll be it's it's ending on uh, Sunday. Yeah. So that'll be uh, we'll be maybe we won't maybe I'll be I'll be furiously trying to get to GR forty six and I can't stop for podcast. Rise from your grave and, and you'll just, hear, it. you'll just hear clicking the whole time in the background. And then I'll start cursing when I die. But yep. But yeah, so season two wrapping up and have fun, guys. And um, like actually, I'll be having fun. You two will be um playing uh, or cheesy or something. <laughs> And this is the Diablo 3 podcast on the DiabloLeagueGamers.com. And thanks for your time. And moo. Double it. Moo. Moo. Moo.